Hello, okay, uh, there we go. So this is a recording demo of the color replacement effect for Alec. Um, there might be a fan and uh, there might be a cat. So try to hear as best as you can, I guess. I I'm gonna do my best to say everything. But if you hear like meows and stuff and a fan, that's that's what that is. Anyway, um, so this is the uh, shader that I talked about with uh, Alec. And you can see there's different colors here. And you can you know change this, it's a replacement effect. Works with any uh, image, you just need to have the uh, the alpha map of it look kind of like this. So the alpha for it, you can see, is a cutout, which is 0 or 1. Um, anything above 0 gets interpreted as 100%. And you can actually uh, customize any as, man, as many zones as you'd like. Um, the range limit is 255 for alpha channels, so 254 about minus the level 0 channel. Um, you can also change the border color. Um, yeah, so it's 254, and then if you want to deal with compression on images, it might be, you know, depending if you're using sRGB, crunches it out a little bit. Um, if I look here real quick, yeah, sorry, it's a little, okay, here we go. Uh, this it or this it? One of these two has a really good information demo on it. I believe it's, yeah, here we go. So, yeah, if you're using sRGB, you can see project using linear color space or gamma color space and if you're using linear linear color space um then you're going to end up with the crunch here that's why a lot of stuff doesn't show up until 50 percent so um it says that bottom bottom is the linear color space but if you import a texture as linear it should work um if you need to just import an alpha map that's linear that's not using srgb whatever uh it's format stuff i'll let you figure it out <laughs> Um, but yeah, so you can also, with this system, toggle any of these on or off. So if I had this color one toggle, you can see it defaults back to what the original is, um, which is cool. Um, and it's basically just using like a, a desaturate here. So the way I do this is for as many color steps as there are, I take the alpha channel here. And first, um, I'll take the number of steps. So in this case, it's four because there are four different um, alpha channels. There's 0, 20%, 40%, 80%, you know, there's, there's different levels. It's, it goes up to 100. So there's different steps, and the number of steps in the alpha is the number of like color zones you can adjust. So let's set to 4 here. So I'm going to divide 1 by 4, and I'm going to get, you know, 25. Basically, you're just going to take the base of that. So we're going to find like 25. It needs to be a little bit above whatever it would have been. Um, if that makes sense. So like it's, you know, this alpha layer is at 20 and we're stepping the node to be either zero or a hundred. Um, we're going to use that edge as 25 because we want to see everything that is the alpha level itself. Um, so if, if that makes sense, I hope it does. Um, so just the base level and that's going to get this and that's going to get the overall alpha. It's going to get everything. And you can see if I disconnect this edge node, what it basically does is it looks for a range, anything above. It's kind of like a floor or ceiling node. This cuts out each different layer. You want to make sure that your stuff's, you know, set up appropriately for it. So we got the edge there, and that edge we're going to plug directly into the alpha. And that's going to give us, you know, our alpha for the image. Then on top of that, you're going to go through each one of these. So, you know, I've just got the step times two, times three, times four. Um, and if you wanted to do this pro programmatically, you just have one of these multiply steps uh, for the number of steps minus one, because, you know, you don't need the base one. Or if you want, you could just have one and just have it times one. Do whatever the math you like. There's multiple ways to do this. Um, so then what we're going to do is we start from the top and go down. So um, we're going to do multiply by four, but subtract 0 0.05. Reason being, if it's at 100%, it won't actually see this because, you know, that's a full crunch. So we need to subtract a little bit off. So I just put this in here as like an arbitrary subtraction, just a small amount. We'll do it. As you can see, if I just state this to zero, it's not going to see anything because it's going to cut everything out. Uh, so just a small amount there. So that's how we get the first color range, uh, which is at the highest alpha value if you look here. And then we have this. And what we basically do is for each one of these, this is the zone we're going to work with. So I've got this guy plugged into a branch. This is the toggle you can see where basically it goes up to this lerp node, which is linear interpolation, and basically says, okay, so we've got the base color. There's the color of the guy. Um, we need to re replace it with the border color, but we'll get back to that. Um, but the first step here is these lerps. So you can see, okay, A is going to be the base color. It's going to replace it with B, um, which is 
this, uh, you know, just the just this desaturated version of this. So you can take the base color, desaturate it, and then it's going to be uh, multiplied by that first color. So we're going to take that multiplied color, and that's what's going to be replacing the original. That makes sense. Um, and then on top of that, the T is what where it actually does that replacement. So it's saying like, where is this going to show up? And that's why we have this full bright version because it's this zone of the texture. And the cool thing is you can see like this little, this dot where the, the regular one has a little like shine on it. You can actually cut out of this um, just so that dot you know, shows up even though it's in this color zone. So you can, you can mix and match pretty easily with this system. Um, but yeah, so if it's, if this color toggle is on or off, you can see if I go into the graph inspector and go to the color toggle, when I toggle this on or off, it's going to say it's either going to be zero. So it's not replacing this at all. Or it's going to replace it with this zone. So that's, that's how we branch the colors and toggle them to actually, um, you know, toggle the color, show it or not. Um, then on top of that, you go each step by step. So you can see if we get this 25%, it's going to get, or 100% um, edge, it's going to get the brightest. Each one of these steps is going to get the colors above it as well. Um, and you could use like a color mask version as well, and that would... Um, find the specific color, but it's not always perfect. It's like a little bit like green screen. There's a little bit of chroma key artifacts you might run into based on compression. But um, so for this next one, what I do to eliminate that is I say, okay, all right, so we're gonna go to the next layer down. So that's this times three. It gets us this zone, which you can see is the next brightest, this guy. But then it's gonna cut out um, this by subtracting it. So it's just gonna take the layers, uh, the layer specifically above and subtract it. So you can see, okay, all right, so we got this, cool. So now we're gonna get the one that's two, and we wanna subtract the result of the previous layer. So this guy right here, bunk, and we get this. Then you see this guy, the button we got, because we subtracted this from this, baboo. Then we took this and subtracted this, baboo. That's how you get those different layers. And then lastly, these are like basically all the colors. Um, so we're gonna take the bottom layer and we subtract this from it to get that border color. Um, and that's how we get to replace the border. And you can see right here, just have it set up with the color again. Um, it doesn't need to be anything specific because the border is usually going to be flat, but if you have a like shaded border, you can do the same multiply method up here. Um, and you could rearrange this too. Like uh, since you're getting these zones anyway, you could have this just add instead of, you know, lerping and start on a black background and just add each color as long as they don't overlap. But um, this is pretty much the whole system. You take the base guy, get your alpha map, um, and then you get your number of steps, divide it by, you know, take one divided by it, make that many step multiplies, um, and then you want to subtract from the top layer so you can see everything, and then on all these you just subtract the previous result to get that range. Um, then you're going to use those ranges to lerp in those new colors, which you get by taking the base you know, desaturating it and then multiplying it by whatever color. And I'm sure, you, like, if, you know, depending on the game engine, there's just color replacement. So you could just do a flat color add in here. You can do an add if you start with a really dark base color. It is really any, it's, it's freeform. It's a pretty flexible system and it's not very programmatically uh, expensive. So that's the system. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I hope this resource has been useful, etc. And yeah, I'll show you some examples real quick. So you can take like the base Pokeball, and we're gonna make it, I don't know, fucking. What color is a luxury ball? It's like dark, right? Get like that. Take this red guy. It's like a gold color there, I think. And the border color can be like this really dark gold orange thing. That kind of looks gross, but we'll keep it. And then this green is also gonna be this like dark gray. Yeah. And you got like your cool whatever ball, whatever this is. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can you can customize and toggle whatever you like. And again, you can set the color toggles to make it turn offable, if that makes sense. And there's an easy way to do this. Like this would not be that hard to recreate with a script that compiles this type of shader automatically. Um, but yeah, I hope that was useful.